All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Baltimore, Maryland, on the other side of the country by Umar <laughs> Hamid. How are you doing, Umar? I am excellent. Happy to be here. Great. And Umar is the author of three books and an international keynote speaker and a kick-ass, amazing coach, which is fantastic. <laughs> and I hope the, my mom's uh, hearing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and he does online courses and coaching programs empowered by neuro-linguistic programming and applied neuroscience. And so what we're going to talk about today is building a winning mindset. So, um, Umar, let's let's be honest. Like over the uh, over the last year or so, yes, probably a lot of people's mindsets have been challenged in in a in a large way, and particularly um, people who are in sales or business development or stuff like that. Like it, it, it was really really hard for some business for some uh, segments, maybe not so much because they were the lucky ones, but for a lot of others. So, how do you pick yourself up and really build a a a a, a a successful mindset, but also like a recovery mindset, if you like, you know, one where it kind of pulls you back and gets you pushing forward. So we're going to actually do a technique and I'm going to show you how to do that. So everyone Excellent. knows how to do it. But before we do that, it's just really kind of interesting is that, uh, you know, how do we change how we feel in any situation? So you could be minding your own business and your significant other could use a certain tone of voice and just hearing that tone of voice all of a sudden puts you in a state of like either anger or you kind of cave in. So we're all familiar with, you know, we've got the ability to go from being okay to not okay in a moment, right? Yeah. Just just for the record, never happens with myself, with other, girl. <laughs> but with so, other people. <laughs> to our uh, brain, it's just like I, I went from state A to state B, and I can do that in an instant. And what we need to realize as salespeople, as human beings, is that we can go from a not okay state to a kick-ass amazing state in the same moment. So the question is, how? Because yeah. that's what a Michael you, Jordan does, right? Yeah, they know how to switch it on. And that's such a fascinating, even before you tell us, right? That's such a fascinating point, right? Because as you said... We know through experience that we can go from positive to negative really fast. As you say, it can be a look, it can be a tone, it can be, it can be just about anything. But we rarely think about, oh, can we go from that to really positive in just the same amount of speed? I mean, most people would say, no, no, you can't. And just think about that. It's like uh, that when I tell a story of somebody crumbling and being crushed, everyone goes, yeah, that could happen. I could see that. <laughs> when you talk about somebody going the other way, it's like, well, not for me. Yeah. Maybe it could happen for like John, but not for me. And it's just where that's our culture. That's what we're hotwired as. So part of the mindset that we have, we have absorbed from people around us. So it turns out that at the heart of who we are is where we hold our beliefs. And we have anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 beliefs that define who we are. The only problem is most of those beliefs we get by the time we're the age of seven. Right. And we pick up those beliefs through osmosis from our parents, our uncles, our aunts, our teachers, the cookie monster. If anybody says something believable, we believe it. And let me give you an example of one of those. You could have a, a beautiful family in San Diego going out to one Saturday morning to go look at new cars. Mm -hmm. And just as they pull up in the lot, mom turns to dad and says, look, honey, if you really like a car, don't let the salesperson know or they'll force you to buy it. And little Sally, who's five in the back seat, kind of hears this and goes, oh, better not trust salespeople. And there's a really good chance she's going to become a salesperson, but she'll reach a certain plateau and won't be able to go past it because that limiting belief from that innocuous comment her mom made when she was five is now as a belief and is holding her hostage. And isn't that fascinating how we end up being the adults we do from all those beliefs that we had in the past? And most of them are amazing that give us these lives and some of them hold us hostage. Yeah. And, and the thing is that it's quite hard to recognize the ones that hold us hostage because, as you said, I mean, we're adults, right? We, we don't go... 
well, you know, maybe maybe my my sales aren't going the way they should be. Maybe I'm not having the mental success because I'm hanging on to a belief from when I was seven or six. I mean, most people don't go there, right? Oh, absolutely. And it makes no sense. Uh, obviously, it's the economy or the competition or my boss mm. or our service. It couldn't be me. <laughs> could never be me. And it certainly couldn't be me from when I was six years old. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So let me tell you this. Uh, so it's not just people that are stuck. Mm. I had this uh, salesperson. I was doing this keynote speech. And this salesperson contacts me afterwards and says, Umar, I really need your help. I said, okay, what's going on? He says, Umar, I'm the number one salesperson for my company and I'm earning a ton of dough, which doesn't sound like a problem. <laughs> but the yeah, problem- I hear most people going, no, bring it on, bring on that problem. The problem was this. He said, each time I, I know I've reached a plateau and there's much more I could do, but each time I try and do better, something blocks me. I'm not sure what it is, but it sounds like some mindset thing. Can you help me? So I said, uh, sure. Tell me about a particular time uh, you were beating yourself up because you're not doing better. He says, ah, the other day I, I, I drove home and before I got out of the car, I was sitting in the car going, you know, what the hell's wrong with me? Why can't I get to the next level? I said, excellent. Go back to that moment, be in the car and see whatever you saw, like the dashboard, the garage door in front of you. He goes, okay, I'm doing it. I said, here, what have you heard? Your inner thoughts, whatever was happening in the background is as I'm doing it. When you do those two things, you get to re-experience what you were feeling back then in that moment in the car. What were you feeling? And goes, man, that's weird. It's a, it's a feeling on my upper chest. It's kind of uncomfortable and I'm feeling it now. So what we did was we linked that feeling to his unconscious mind using a tool from neuroscience and your unconscious mind records everything. Because I had I asked him, have you felt this before? He would have gone, Maybe or no, mm -hmm. but with this tool, mm -hmm. it brought back a childhood memory. And this wasn't under seven. He was about eight years old. He'd gone to a restaurant with his family. And before the waitress came, his dad uh, turned to the kids and pointed at him and said, remember, don't order steak. We can't afford it. And in that moment, it set up a belief around money and self-worth. And it still allowed him to be the number one salesperson in his company. But anytime he thinks about doing better, that belief comes up and it sabotages his efforts and so what I really want the listeners and the viewers to understand is this, is that your brain will lie to you, but your body never lies. So the next time you feel uncomfortable, rather than going, I'm going to ignore that, what I want you to do is maybe not in the middle of a meeting, do what I'm about to share with you in a second, but as soon as you get to a quiet place, wherever you are feeling that uncomfortable feeling, just touch yourself there and just ask say this, say hello. And whatever's causing that feeling is going to go, yeah. And say, you know, what do you want me to learn from this experience? You will get an answer and it could be higher rumor, but I doubt it. <laughs> well, it could well be. Um, but but what's, what's really interesting um, there about what you just described is that there is a physiological reaction, right? And, oh, absolutely. And, that's, and, it, and, and it's the clue. And that's, those are the things. And normally we look on those as well, that's just a side effect, you know, because I'm stressed. So now I'm feeling something as opposed to what you just said is saying, no, 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 that's not a side effect. That's a message. Yeah. But John, did you ever watch this TV show Lie to Me? Uh, no, I didn't. So basically, it was a show based, <laughs> based on a real life guy. And what they would do is they'd look at the micro expressions people get. Mm -hmm. And from the micro expressions, they could figure out what feeling they were feeling. And that way you could tell when someone's lying or not. And the guy that actually was a real guy is based on, he went, you know what? I'm going to take a look at Americans and I'm going to get 108 pictures. And there's going to be Americans that are happy. And you know what that physiology looks like and yep. disgust, like you're, you sneer and you get this thing on your eyes going in. And so you got 108 pictures of Americans feeling these different basic emotions. And they went to different Americans and said, uh, John, what's this guy feeling? And you'd go, that guy's feeling disgust. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. He said, who are the people opposite to Americans? And uh, he said, the Japanese, like those guys don't emote anything. Mm -hmm. And he showed them the American pictures. And sure enough, the Japanese people could go, uh, that's joy, that's fear, that's anger, that's disgust. And what, it, what he proved was that what you're feeling is connected to your body language in a very profound, deep way. And so the first thing I want to share with your uh, viewers and your listeners is this, is that let's say you're feeling like, 
oh, I really don't want to make those calls today. Mm-hmm. And notice my body language immediately went into that. And it starts becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy because the more I kind of bring on my shoulders and droop my forehead and look at my feet, the worse I feel. And the feelings make my physiology worse. My physiology, before you know it, I'm going to be crying underneath the desk. So the number one thing you can do is this. Do you want to change how you feel? Trying to think your way through it is really hard, but what you could do is go stand up, change your physiology right away. And as soon as you change your physiology, it forces your emotions to change. So what I want you to do is realize that your physiology trumps your psychology every single time. And so do that. Just be, pretend you're Tony Robbins for a moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, when I love that, Umar, because basically, yeah, what you just said there is, you know, most people would say, okay, I have to talk my way out of this. So I'm going oh, yeah. to sit here, I'm going to sit here slumped over and I'm going to go, come on, come on, John, get it together. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm just going to slump more because basically I'm not going to get it together. But what you're saying is um, rather than try and talk my way out of it, I need to change my physiology to set up the circumstances for me to be able to come out of it. So this is not a pencil. This is actually a pen, you may have noticed. Mm -hmm. But they've done these studies where they get uh, groups of depressed people. So on your team, you've got 12 of them. On my team, I've got 12. But the only difference is every morning, your team that are just as depressed as we are, hold their turn around for two minutes. They hold a pencil in their mouth for two minutes. And it forces their physiology to go into more of a smiling mode. And after three weeks, your scores of people feeling depressed, that stuff goes down. The control group, my group, we didn't do anything. We're just as depressed. And they weren't any happier. They just took on the physiology with a pen in their mouth. And that's how powerful this is. So change your physiology is the fastest way to change how you feel. It's not going to change everything. But for that moment, when you need it, it will change your mood instantly. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And by the way, that I, I was just thinking when you were doing that with the pen is, um, you know, I'm originally from Ireland and my wife is, a, is uh, from California. And one of the things I'm, I've always been amazed at is how Americans like her can smile on demand, right? It's just not, oh, yeah. something, we, just not something we grew up in Ireland learning how to do. So well, you have to hang out with British to... people. Though. No wonder you're depressed. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. I didn't want to say that. I'm glad you said I'm a Brit, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm a subject of Her Majesty the Queen. So I can say that yeah, well i commiserate i commiserate with you but there you go so um but yeah but but i love that about the fact is is turning it on its head because yeah because we're always bombarded with this stuff of, of, of everybody thinks mindset is self-talk <clears throat> so let me tell you about self-talk uh this is organization called vestige where you know ceos all gather from different mm-hmm. groups and on this one particular group they had 21 ceos And one of the exercises I gave them was I gave everybody a blank three by five card. And I said, you know, we all have that negative voice inside our heads that sabotages us. Could you please write down what your voice says to you to stop you dead in your tracks? So everyone writes it down. I shuffle up the cards. I hand them out to everybody. And I give the first card to the first person. It's not their card. They don't know whose it is, but they start reading that card. It's like, I'm a fraud and I'll never amount to much. And this stunned silence in the entire room because one of those 21 CEOs is thinking that. And progressively, they go down. Everyone's got this negative BS inside their head. And at the end of that exercise, I know how to bum out a crowd, let me tell you. (laughs) We take a coffee break. And this woman comes up to me. One of the CEOs says, Umar, John read my card. And when he read that, all I wanted to do was to go there and hug him but I can't do that for myself. So that negative voice inside our head. So just using languaging and talking yourself through it, it can help, but mostly does not because your unconscious mind knows where the skeletons are buried. Mm. Like there's a pandemic of people going, oh, I'm an imposter. Sooner or later, people yeah. are going to figure it out. And they've got awards. They've got citations. So proof positive, they're not a fraud, but they still feel it. But can I share a story with you that is Please. so tragic? The salesperson uh, reached out to me. Uh, it was a friend recommended, uh, you got to go see Umar. And this was just this past Monday. And she said, you know, I'm in sales and I've reached a plateau. And uh, let me tell you what's going on is I get angry uh, uncontrollably at 
the wrong times, not with the client, but I feel it. And I just want to let you know that uh, when I was five years old, my father started sexually molesting me till I reached puberty. And so she's been carrying that around for 40 years. And so what we ended up doing was one part of her psyche knows that she could be freaking fantastic. And the other part from the abuse is like, you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And we resolved that conflict in an hour. And the very next day she sent uh, a text saying, Umar, I have not felt this level of joy in my life for a very, very long time. Whatever needed releasing, needed releasing. And the reason I share that with you is this, is that in our society, we think that change is difficult, it's hard. If it's ever gonna happen, it's gonna take a really long time. And I want you to know that change happens like that. And you could have somebody go to a psychiatrist for two years and one Thursday afternoon, the psychiatrist says something a moment before they said it, the person was still stuck. A moment after they said it, it changed their life. So I don't want people to wait two years to get there. They could solve it themselves in 30 years, that we have the technology right now that we can help people like within the next 30 days, you will get a bunch of breakthroughs that'll change your freaking life. Uh, it's It should be our human right to let go of the past and live up to who we were always meant to be. Yeah, I, I, a great statement, uh, Umar, and I, I couldn't agree more. And it is it is funny about, you know, the the imposter thing. You said, you know, all the CEOs around. I think uh, a lot of people suffer from that. Uh, and and I have I've worked with people and, and talked with people who who have that. I, lo I love I'm, I always use an example because a little while ago I helped um, somebody I know with a resume. Nice. Right? They wanted to, they wanted to go after <laughs> this job. And the first thing they said to me was, well, it's not going to be a very good resume because I haven't really done much. You know, I mean, I've done, and, then, and I said, well, that's fine. Let's, let's, let's just start. And I said, well, we're going to go back and we're just going to go back through all the different things you've done. Let's just do it chronologically. Right. And so we went through it and I picked them out. And by the end, I, when I put it together, I said, look, what does this look like? And they went, they looked at me and they said, oh, my God, I'm. I, it makes me like I've done way more than I thought I did. I've achieved way more. And I said, precisely because you were looking at wrong. Your, your whole mindset was like, I've never done anything. But when you lay it out and actually look back and look at the experience, look what you've overcome, look at where you've had your successes. I said, we've got an amazing resume. And I think everybody has an amazing resume, but they don't realize it. Yeah. And the interesting thing, and this may not be true for that person, mm -hmm. is that at some future time, which could be tomorrow or next week, that they could be showing it to a friend. And it's like, well, that's not really me. Like John kind of like uh, spruced it up for me. Mm -hmm. And all of what you put down there was true. But sometimes, have you ever heard somebody use this expression? Like something wonderful happens and they go, I don't believe it. We do not use language accidentally. Yeah. We use language purposefully. Sometimes we consciously don't know what it is, but we do know that uh, our unconscious mind speaks the truth and sometimes we miss it. So, so when we just kind of messing around right now, chatting, I'm not paying a lot of attention, but if we were actually sitting down together seriously, then I would be paying attention to uh, your word choice, how you're saying it, your body language, if we were more in that session. And it's amazing how much information gets transmitted uh, that uh, I do as well. It's uh, one day I was talking to somebody and as they were talking, they were talking about feeling uncomfortable and they put their, oh, I'll give you a better one. It was, I was watching this documentary on Paulson. It was in the 2007, 2008 financial crisis. He went to Congress and he wanted this bazooka, this financial weapon to protect the country. And he said, uh, you know, uh, right now we have a water pistol. I need this thing. And what he was going to say, but I'll never use it. And this is what he did. But I'll never use it. He covered his mouth so wow. they couldn't see his lips move. And then in the documentary, they said, uh, you know, within two weeks, they actually ended up using it. Mm -hmm. But his unconscious mind knew that I'm going to be using it. But consciously thought, and his hand just came up to cover his mouth. And it's like... Wow, do we transmit yeah. this stuff all over the place? We just and, and I guess the, 
Uh, and I guess the thing is, uh, especially if you're in, in sales and that is that you are transmitting a lot of things to your prospects and, and that that you may not be aware of. And, and as you said, that maybe you know, going to somebody like Umar and learning about this, you, you, could, you could change your whole um, trajectory of, of your year by actually recognizing maybe some of the things. There may be some simple reasons why you are losing deals because of what you're transmitting. Yeah, and what your, what your beliefs are and what you, how you show up. And sometimes, you know, people have this, it's like, hey, John, you know, I really need to go after these companies because they're the dream clients. And when you look at their activity, they're not going nowhere near those people. <laughs> but once they get yeah. their mindset right, then they actually go after those people and they start getting it. So I think it all starts and stops with our mindset. And you can go to university and you can learn you can get an MBA, you can get degrees in chemistry. And I think the one thing we really need to teach people not in university, not in high school, but in elementary school, teaching kids how to take charge of this thing, their mindset, mm -hmm. it would put bullying is like an issue. And bullying only works is if I internalize you being mean to me. Yep. But if you have the right mindset tools, it's just like, John's overcompensating for something. <laughs> and it, it just doesn't impact me as a bully. You stop picking on me. It's just no much. It's not fun. So I think that's my, well, that is my mission in life is if we can teach people how to take charge of their mindset, that it would change their lives. And if they've got kids, they just show up in a more powerful way. Because a lot of times, you know, what you say and what you do is two different things. They would align. That's my mission is to teach people how to take charge of this. So we just make this a better more fulfilling world. Yeah, this is fantastic, Umar. I love it. Love a great way to to end this. Um, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that would be so much more effective than uh, some of the strategies that are being used right now. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Uh, Umar's all of Umar's information is going to be below this video. All the links to his books, to his website, and everything. But before we go, Umar, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Uh, number one, in the show notes, there's going to be a link to my Get Unstuck course. It's a free course. It's a video course. And it's going to teach you a process how to get unstuck. And you're going to love it. So Perfect. the main thing uh, about me is this, is that uh, I discovered my purpose back in 1992. And it was to help people break through their limitations. And it took me to 2003 to figure out how to do that. And it took me to probably 2008 to start doing it well. And so I'm doing what I'm meant to do on planet Earth, which is to help people break through. And I invite you, no matter who you are, where you are, everybody has a purpose in life. And find your purpose. Doesn't mean you have to change your career. You'll just show up in a different way. And that's the first step to becoming awesomer. And I love that word, is when you figure out who you are, you can make sense of the world in a bigger way. And John, thank you so much for a great interview and the invitation. And uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, listen, great. And thank you so much for coming and sharing such really, really interesting information. And I would encourage people, go check out Umar, check this out. Um, you know, make this the best year you've ever had. We've had a we've had a very challenging 12 months, obviously, because oh, yeah. of the pandemic. For some people, it has been devastating. People have lost loved ones, etc. But but regardless, it's the it's the it's the first collective experience this globe has had, uh, you know, where literally everywhere in the globe was affected. So it has impacted people, whether it's at a very high level because you've lost someone or just because of, you know, some of the rest, uh, restrictions that ever. This is the time to put yourself in the best position you can possibly be in as we come out of this. And so I check out check out Umar's um, mindset training and. And just like give yourself the gift of, of doing things differently from now on. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Ah, brilliant. So, uh, everyone, thanks so much. And thanks so much, John. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Umar. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.